This is Business AM. You're watching Metropole Television and you're just in time for your economic review this morning. Yes, let's therefore talk about it. Kenya Revenue Authority cannot trace more than 896 billion wired back into the country after receiving an amnesty on a source declaration. As of August 30th, records of the tax showed that 3,543 Kenyans repatriated 118 billion shillings as of August 30th. Data as of May 13th, 2019 indicated that Kerry had 1.09 trillion shillings with a negative of 8.99 six trillion in the past the tax money had said that it's not clear if the money repatriated back into the country was used for the right purposes or taken back to the offshore accounts kra is already bearing the blunt of the covid 19 pandemic with the exponential drops in collections in the first month of the new financial year question this morning that is it hard for Kerry to trust the money repatriated into the country and joining us this morning we do have uh, Washington Degas and uh, Collins Lodge. Collins I want to pick this with you I mean yes we do know that they are running this tax amnesty program that yes if you hadn't declared you can pretty much bring them back without you getting penalized that your money will not be taxed but Kerry has not told them that you can't bring it back and take it back again, Collins. I agree with the, with the sentiment of Kerry, but then how they roll out this issue uh, a concern to me right from the from the first instance. One, the intention of Kerry was that to be able to see that they've spurred reinvestment back to the country, but the way they were going about it was totally different because you get even um, that regulation was so much... Uh, so much in conflict with the Kenya Income Tax uh, ITA Act. But that aside, I think uh, a lot of people who've started money with an offshore account, they have used this as an avenue to bring that back that money, and then after bringing that back money, get licenses and clearances from the state, and then reinvest it back to the offshore account. You remember, when they were rolling this out, uh, CS Rotich was saying that uh, this money won't be taxed. Um, they were, they were in their thinking they were thinking that these are kenyans who've earned their money rightfully and they've decided to stash money on offshore account yet we know this is not uh, this is not the case we've even been able to see people who are getting into dirty dirty money deal this is an using sending out their money of clearing the money here and then sending it out there but of importance to me and uh this morning what i want to talk about is the agreement that kra has with at least 130 countries with regards to to locating this money why haven't why yet why are they yet to actualize this and two is the center that we have that traces illicit money in this country what is the work of that center if uh, if we are still we are now complaining about 869 billion being unaccounted for and asking ourselves where that money has gone and created back I mean, it is about time Kiare uh, matched up to, to its role and were able to explain to us where this money is. All right, Washington, I want to bring you in on, on that as well. I mean, uh, Kiare is making it look like it's very difficult for them to trace this money that has been repatriated back into the economy to the point of asking that probably it was not used for the purposes that it was meant to be used for. I mean, why do we have that disparity from the tax one this morning? Because, uh, Simba, uh, good morning, Simba, by the and, and Collins. Good morning, man. Yes. Uh, now you, you need to, you need to understand some of these things that have been done in this country. They are not done with the intention of uh, the, 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 it was done with the intention of bringing in the money. It was in, done with the intention of laundering the money. You know who are the people who are involved in these uh, trillions of Kenyan shillings also in this country? These are politicians. This dirty money that's got it all of there. But this money had to be cleaned somehow, right? Because it doesn't actually make any sense to say money should be gotten into the country. Uh, no, no, not um, uh, and it's not be penalized only for the same money to disappear again. What is the what is the sole intention of the whole uh, pronouncement, so to speak? The sole intention was launder the money, get these politicians' money back. That money, how much that money do you have in this country? The, the previous the previous regime has trillions of cash in it outside of this country. The, there's a lot of dirty money circulating outside of this country. And 
if the intention was really to bring back the money to develop this economy, this money should have been tracked, so to speak. The money comes, then just because these guys at the end of the day, they, they cannot tell us they don't have the mechanisms to track this kind of money. They have. How do they even know the money is out there in the first place? That means they know that. that I mean, if they wanted, by the way, if they wanted to go for that money, they can go for it if they wanted. But that was not the sole intention. Sole intention was let, let the money come back to the country, let the money get cleaned, let it go back out again. So, and you see, that is what happens in this country. We are always being taken for right by these guys, you know? They, they, always have a, they always have a nest up their sleeve, whatever they do, whatever pronouncements they say, you know? Yes. Uh, Collins, I want to get your sentiments on that as well. I mean, when you say that you have been given a period in which you're supposed to bring your money back into the country, does that mean that we are talking about specific numbers? Here we have the numbers, more than 3,500 Kenyans. Fine. Are these names not known? At these accounts, therefore, not declared? And so we're talking about capital outflows from the country, are we not under the understanding that Kenya has a very tight uh, framework around that in terms of protecting our capital outflows? So why is it very hard for Kerry to come back again and tell us, man, we are not even sure, we are not even sure how this money was used? And that is the question, Simba, this morning. That when they are saying that uh, they don't know where that $869 billion has gone to, the question is, Right from the onset, you knew who are the people who are having the accounts. But you, you are, I don't want to say you're putting around with regards to going after them. You know when Indonesia and India rolled out a tax amnesty, and they know why Indonesia was able to realize success, Indonesia got at least 368 um, USD billion out of this. Because they went right for, for those guys who have, who have stashed money abroad. They had an arrangement with them, and they had an agreement with them. And they, real, uh, they talked about if the money is being repatriated back to the country, what is its functions? And I remember when Rotich was saying, when he was rolling out this plan, I think in 2016, he was saying, what they intend to see at the end of the day is that this money, after it has been repatriated back to the country, it is it is injected to, to development and all other things. And they have a list of people who are doing this. They know the numbers. They could not have told us 300, they could not have told us around uh, 3,000 people have such close to a trillion out there if they don't know who these specific people, individuals are and the accounts that they are. I think KRA is just lazy to go after these people because at the end of the day, they know these are the same people who put them in those positions. And so you cannot go after someone who put you in a position to ask him to repatriate back his money for another function, for a function of development. I mean, for Kenyans to be able to, even, even beyond just repatriating the money, the bigger picture of reinvesting back to this country, if that is to be achieved and if that is to, to be a reality. I mean, there are a lot of things we must be able to achieve locally first so that we can attract the investors the investors from abroad. And finally, as I was saying, it's about time ITA and this regulation are uh, speaking at the same language. You know, there's a lot of unclarity and uncertainty and, and vagueness with regards to uh, the kind of income, foreign income, that is to is to be repatriated back to the country. When we talk about the ITA, ITA talks about um, what someone has gained or uh, yeah, what someone has gained. But this other, this other regulation talks about Talks about uh, talks about how you've gained that money, and so it's time we change that tax income that once you've been impatriated, impatriated from source-based uh, source-based uh, reference to uh, residence-based, so that we can we, we can be able to to realize w what we are setting as a as, as a goal for us. But I want to understand the position of KRA in light of everything that is happening. They are still trying to see how far they can cast their net to be able to see that we realize a little bit of some, some expenses to even cushion Kenyans at this time or even to realize their targets. But how they are going about it, it's wrong from the onset. Pretty much. Um, therefore, Washington, I mean, if indeed it is true that we're talking about these monies that we don't know where they are and it's not just a billion, it's close to a trillion, 896 billion that Kerry cannot trace. What does that therefore mean for Kerry's tax amnesty program? Is it time for us to say, well, leave it alone, man, because it's not helping. Because if they cannot trace 896B, that is close to a trillion that is out of the economy already as well, then why run this tax amnesty program? 
<clears throat> because you say uh, actually how much money is out of this country as we speak we have uh, five trillion out of this country five trillion we are talking about about a 1.1 trillion that uh, got back into the country then uh, 80 percent of that 1.1 trillion now cannot be traced again <laughs> you know <laughs> there's a lot of now you see and and and, and just like Collins is saying, the people who hold that money, they are not. Let me tell you, even right now, the, 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 that money, when it came in, the, the, the people who brought in the money, and now they cannot, the money cannot be traced. They are still known by KRA, that I know. If they wanted to go, just as Collins say, just if they wanted to find out where these guys are, it's very, very simple. Why is the money that you brought in back? You know? And like uh, the the... the um, there was a forum the other day they were discussing this money by, by uh, this money that was supposed to come back because uh, almost 900 billion should be felt in the economy as we speak but it cannot be felt in the economy that's why everyone was raising uh, hue and cry where is this money that was repatriated back yet we cannot feel it now the bigger the, the, and, and remember the other day <clears throat> sometime back when uh, there was this there's all these spiders in the Somali waters there's all that money that found its way into Kenya. And within no time, the central bank flagged off, uh, uh, did a lead frag. There's all money circulating in the economy that they don't know where this money is coming from. But after some time, they knew this was the pirated money that the pirate, this was, this was money that the pirates were getting out of Somali waters. Now they're investing it back into this country, especially in Nairobi. <clears throat> and all these uh, miles are coming up in this league. That's the same thing with this kind of money. If it really came back and did a lot of work, it would be seen. But it cannot be seen because it, 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 it went back. Or it was put it back. And the purpose, that's why I say, the purpose of all this exercise was actually not to gather money into the economy and, and, and let the money do the work. There's still five trillion out there. How can they go for the rest of the money? You see, there's this issue of uh, acting like uh, it is beyond their control. This government acts like so helpless. You know, like they cannot really, uh, I mean, it's like they've been held at ransom by people that they, they, they cannot really work, so to speak. But we know if this government was the money to come back, it will come back. If the, if the government was this money not to go out, it will not go out. You know, I mean, that, that, that's the bottom line of this, because let, let, let us not let, let, let this pronouncement not take us back and forth discussing what is happening. We know exactly all this political statements are all about you know pretty much all right um collins as we clear on that issue i mean should we sort of praise this tax amnesty uh program from uh KRA if indeed the money comes in and goes out immediately uh this uh this this thing is this policy and regulation is working what is not just working, it is the goodwill of KRA. Remember, KRA has signed an exchange of income information agreement with at least 130 countries. That gives us permission to look into, 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 into information, into personal information uh, pertaining um, the Kenyans' investments and their accounts. But then we are the, one, the same ones raising red flag and saying at least 800 billion is yet to be unaccounted for or 800 billion has not been repatriated back. I mean, it's only a matter of goodwill. If Kerry wants to go after that, they can do that. If Kerry wants to look at uh, uh, the, the institution that is in charge of tracking illicit money, they can do that. But we are yet to do that as it stands now. So that's what I'm saying. The policy that we have is a good policy. The intention was good to spur investment back to the country, but the way we are going through about it is, is just bad. It's time to cut the empty rhetoric and it times to, to, it's time to actually act. Act on these people, act on these accounts, you know them. Call them for, for as they call us forum. Talk to them about what we, we want to see. Yeah? And I know now I'm, I'm speaking from both sides of my mouth. Talk, meet them, talk to them, have an arrangement to them, tell them your vision, and then after that, ask them now to repatriate the money. Or if not so, go after them. Most of this money is corrupt money. Pretty much. Now, we do have a statement from KRA Collins as we are speaking about this issue this morning. They're saying that we'll be addressing it right here on Business I Am. So they tell us where is this 896B and why K 
can they not trace it? Gentlemen, if you allow me, let's move into the next issue that we have for you this morning. Now, Kenyan manufacturers have petitioned the Kenya Revenue Authority's plan to increase prices of 31 commodities, which include fuel, bottled water, juice and beer in October, saying it will cut demand and hit tax collection. Now, the Kenya Revenue had announced a plan to have the prices of the products adjusted by 5.43% to factor in the average inflation for the year ending June 2020, a factor that will see consumers exposed to high prices. Now, the lobby argues that increment comes at a time when the households in the country are in dire need of cushioning from the effects of the pandemic pandemic, with the association arguing that Kerry should wait until the country is declared coronavirus free to start effecting the changes. Now, under the current law, the tax money just needs to issue a legal notice that says the changes in the prices of commodities without the approval coming from a parliament. Now, Washington, we do know where Kerry is coming from. Their collections have been hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. We do know that one of their most reliable uh, bases for the financial year 2020-2021 VAT tax has been hit as well. So should, we, should they be allowed to effect the changes or should they wait? I mean, the, the economy right now is hard hit. Everyone is hard hit, you know? People have been laid off. So many, I mean, unemployment is at its peak right now. Uh, apart from what the government keeps on telling us, that actually uh, the economy is not doing that badly. The economy is doing badly, my friend. Bad, bad. I mean, people are not working. People are not, people are being auctioned left, right, and center. Get to the ground and see. People are not having any money, you know? Now, even, even, even uh, this, this what we call the middle class. The middle class is uh, uh, the people who are hardest hit when a slight ripple like this happens, you know? So now, we're not even talking about the, the middle class, now we're talking about the poor. The people who actually earn their daily bread, people who don't wait for the end of the month, people who live day to day, the casual laborers. Now, when, when, when KRA goes for, 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 for the subsistence, those are, those are called subsistence... Uh, 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 some sort of good, so to speak, by the by the small man, they are actually killing this country. They are killing these people. You know, these people cannot afford. I mean, things like how to keep on raising the price of fuel. You saw these guys cook with. What, happen, what will happen? People will go back to the forest and start cutting the trees. Now you're not supposed to cut down trees in this country. So uh, getting people into desperation. You know, I think that there should be better ways of how the government does this thing introducing VAT to, to, to some of these products. Just like uh, I told you the other day, Simba, we are in court ourselves. We went to court the other day because of VAT on, uh, on insurance services. And, and, and it was being it, it was introduced in such, such a haphazard manner. It wasn't even legal in the first place. There was no public participation. There was nothing. Of course, there's this clause that KRA is saying that there should be no public participation right now. But that's why maybe they are rushing to implement uh, the, the, this tax laws, they should have waited until January, but they don't wait until January because it's, it's desperate for money. This is uh, they're collecting that they're still stealing. You know, God exactly, you know, you know, it, we, we operate like in a failed state or something. There's no the rule of law. There's no nothing. You, 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 you simply sit down on the citizenry of this country. Maybe they're pushing out to the corner. The, I, was reading a, a, I was reading a certain uh, statement the other day. Maybe the government is pushing us to a corner so they can, they can find a way of uh, running away from this country. You know, you know when, when, when there are scales, they'll be able to run away from their responsibility because I can tell you, these guys are nothing they're doing apart from provoking people. That's what being every day, you know? Yes, uh, Collins, let me bring you in on that. I mean, yes, we have to accept the fact that, well, KRA says you got to adjust these prices in accordance with inflation. Now, we do know, as from next year, they won't be able to, to do that because they have to go back to the house and then the house will approve whatever uh, price adjustments that they want to actually um, uh, effect in the economy. But 
if you really go by what is going on right now, you're pushing carry to the corner. They have to give you that money to support the financial year 2020, 2021. But at the same time, you're also telling them, no, you have to cushion the economy from the effects of this COVID-19 pandemic. So aren't they between a, hard rock and a, between a rock and a hard place when you they have to collect the money, but also over this other side, they have to cushion Kenyans from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic? Totally, and I do, I do agree with you. I mean, the, the question is, is it legal? Yes, it is legal. Uh, what about the time? I think it's the wrong time for that. Just on 2nd April, um, the president tried to come up with policies to cushion Kenyans. At the, and I saw he reduced the VAT from 16% to 14%. Uh, looking from April to now that you're in September, what steps have we done as a country to be able to unsurmount what the president had in mind then that we need so much needed uh, cushioning that now we've overcome apart from how we are forcing the flattening of the curve i don't see any significant thing that has shown that kenyans are now at a position where they can be able to fend for themselves just the other day a report was released that 1.3 million kenyans have lost their jobs throughout this period kenyans have been saddled with uh, issues of job losses um redundancies uh, companies are shutting i mean they the other day we were actually discussing the matters of inflation when we were here and we were talking about how they fetched the numbers we could not even point fingers to what is going on that is so much rosy that can paint a picture of a country that its economy is booming and so uh, be it as it may i think uh, this is ill-timed but i understand the situation of care but beyond people at what rate are they are they imposing on these products at what rate that is one two they're talking about the issue of public participation being attainable because of the Ministry of Health uh, regulations and all that. I don't know who said public participation has to be done physically. I think a uh, COVID uh, panel that was headed by Senator Sakaja at the Senate conducted public participation virtually. And you could see Kenyans would send out their views. They could engage stakeholders virtually, purely virtually. And so the the, the argument that um, they cannot be able to actualize public participation at this time, it's so much lazy a thought. And so in my view, I think um, we as Kenyans are not in a good position. Uh, we are not in a good position to be able to, to, to match up to those increases that they want to impose on those products also. Uh, so beyond that also, um, you need to come down and engage Kenyans. At the level that we are missing public participation in itself is illegal because the constitution makes a provision for public participation as it should be attained. And so the, the most affected Kenyans should be able to reach out to them. And I agree, I, 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 I think uh, Kenya Association of Manufacturers have been able to reach out to Kerry and they have slotted a meeting I think tomorrow yes. and they want to be able to to, to just get clarity on this matter. Yes. So I think that is a good step towards what K, what KM is doing with regards to addressing this issue. Collins, just before I let you go on that, and gentlemen, we're going to take a short break just briefly so that we come back and attack the last issue that we have for you this morning. Cam is also saying, look, it's not just that we are crying for the masses, but this is also going to hit your taxes. Because if you look at these products, if you keep on taxing them, then people are going to move away from them. And then at the end of the day, you're the one who will be at loss. Do you think they're coming from a good point? Quickly at that before we take a short break. I, I think I think they are. I think they are the product, sodas, detergents, and all those things. I mean, it is very easy for us. Kenyan who is struggling at this juncture to do away those is to those, to those um, with those products they're not essentials looking at a, at, a, at a common man who is struggling they're not essentials at all to, to him and so it's very easy for a Kenyan to walk away of those products and affect KRA at the end of the day and this thing and I agree with with, with KM and that's why we need uh, public participation this thing is going to eat back KRA with them not knowing Fantastic. Washington, Cam is saying, well, if you keep on taxing these uh, products, then Kenyans are going to actually move away from them and you're the one who's going to be affected at the t as the taxman by the end of the day. Do you think that they have a point quickly before we take a short break, Washington? Of, of, of course, um, uh, well, it's very, very true. You, you cannot tax. You, you see, ta sometimes tax is used actually to influence consumption of a good. That's why, you've, that's why you have, you call something called a sin tax. That's why you tax, for example, cigarettes. You tax uh, things like beer to be able to make them expensive so the public can move away from that kind of, uh, kind of goods. But how do you tax essentials to the extent that maybe uh, you, 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 uh, you actually think that people don't do, don't, can't do the alternative? 
People can do it an alternative. And that is very, very true. Actually, KRA is not actually going to meet that kind of tax. I think there are better ways of KRA getting the kind of revenue, the kind of income that they are looking at, but not taxing this, the small man down there. The small man, I mean, uh, I think there's, there's um, a certain misconception. Human beings are very, very adaptable. And, and I think uh, we should get very good advisors at KRA. You, 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 if, if someone really cannot, if for, I was given an example of something they feel, you tax kerosene so much, people don't need kerosene. You look for alternative. Right, uh, Washington, we seem to have uh, lost you at that point, but that sort of takes us into the break as we try to find you shortly. Keep on watching Metropole Television. Once we come back, we'll be looking at the position that the taxman, Carey, finds them, himself right now as the COVID-19 pandemic keeps on hitting the economy. Once we come back here on Metropole Television, remember, we are live across our social media platforms, 21046, that is your SMS line.